Republic Troopers, Regs, the Boys in White, the Grand Army of the Republic. Clone Troopers had a number of weapon and armor variants based on rank and personality, but what did a standard clone look like? What was their armor like and what were their weapons like? Clone Trooper armor was a set of white plastoid plates worn over a black body glove. Clone armor was resistant to impacts, pressure, heat, and acid vapors, but vulnerable to lightsabers and blaster fire. The body glove was form-fitting and very tight, which included insulated and sometimes airtight underneath the armor plating, and the body glove protected the clone from extreme cold and heat, but offered very little protection. Phase 1 armor featured a life support system, a tracking device for monitoring troop movements, and a display screen that was all built within the helmet. The helmet also contained a comlink and a comlink antenna, which was located at the helmet's crest, and Phase 1 armor cost around 2,000 credits per clone. Clone armor could be customized based off of rank and later on based off of clone's individual preference, including additional armor attachments and a number of helmet attachments like macro binoculars, a rangefinder, or a visor, and clones typically carried spare blaster cartridges and a health pack. They resemble Mandalorian armor as they were designed by Django Fett, and interestingly enough, the plastoid armor was also used as tubing used to reinforce walls and buildings. The standard blaster rifle that clones used was the DC-15A blaster rifle, manufactured by Blastech Industries, and it roughly weighed about 9.5 pounds. The DC-15A blaster rifle had a magatomic adhesion grip and a non-conducting stock, which was weighted to improve the weapon's overall balance and help reduce recoil. It also had a gas indicator near the trigger and had built-in detachable sniper scopes and iron sights. The blaster rifle also utilized Tiavana gas cartridges and blaster power packs to fire. At a low power, the DC-15 could get 500 shots, but at a fully charged cartridge, only 50 shots would be obtainable. The weapon's built-in targeting system could be connected to the heads-up display in the clone trooper's helmet, and the clone troopers could add a number of attachments including tripod, a gyroscopic stabilizer, and long-range optical systems, and even an ascension cable. It was a trusted weapon for its long-range capabilities and was overall the standard-use rifle for the Republic Army and it cost roughly about 2.2 thousand credits. Another common rifle used in the clone army was the DC-15S, which was a blaster carbine variant of Blastech's DC-15A blaster rifle. Smaller in scale than the DC-15A, the DC-15S lacked its cousin's longer range capabilities, but it was easier to handle than its bulkier cousin and had a higher fire rate and could be switched to fully or semi-automatic. This blaster carbine also used Tibana gas cartridges and blaster power packs to fire. The gas cartridges always lasted around 500 shots due to the fact that the DC-15S had no power settings. It was more accurate and, and had less of a chance of overheating than the DC-15A, and it was overall better in close quarters situations. Costing about 1,000 credits, it was also the precursor to the E-11 Stormtrooper rifle. If we take a look at the start of the Clone Wars, the Republic has 200,000 units already with a million more well on the way. So the 200,000 clones would cost the Republic about 840 million just for armor and blaster rifles, and then costing them 3 to 4.2 billion credits to fulfill the next order of a million clones. And I guess that's what the average clone looks like, and what they cost. Subscribe if you would like, and until next video, goodbye.